So, uh, a very good morning to one and all who have uh, joined us today on this uh, morning for the fourth webinar uh, of in the series of webinars conducted by Human Ethics Committee Association. So, this is Sara, moderator for today's session. Once again, I welcome you all uh, for this webinar on good documentation practices. So, there's a saying that goes, if it's uh, written, it is... If it's written, if it's not written, it has never happened. And if it is written, it doesn't happen what, it doesn't matter what happened. So today's topic is good documentation practices, which is an exceedingly important practice in the field of clinical research. Now, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Sudhir Patel, Secretary, Human Ethics Committee Association and Director, Quinary Clinical Research, to take over from here. Mr. Sudhir. Thank you, Sara. And uh, good morning to everyone. Thanks for uh, joining this uh, webinar today. And I, as a Sudhir, Secretary of Human Ethics Committee Association, just to introduce what is this concept as a Human Ethics Committee Association. So basically, Human Ethics Committee Association is a one initiative to bring all the human ethics committees across the countries on the one single platform. Human Ethics Committee Association is a registered organization in the area of ethics in clinical research. Ethics committees on this platform, they will interact and communicate and they will share the good practices with each other. And this is a need of our to ensure common functionality and understanding across the human ethics committees existing in India. Human Ethics Committee Association represents various ethics committees, select professionals across the nations who have joined this initiative and are committed to work towards building the efficient and effective culture in the clinical research. There are objectives, key objectives of Human Ethics Committee Association to empower the Human Ethics Committees and to bring the uniform ethical standards, to facilitate the interaction between the regulatory bodies, the researcher, and the sponsors and ethics committees on an ongoing basis to organize the seminars, trainings, and workshops. Today, this is a, one of the you know, uh, initiative and webinar series where you all are part of it. Ongoing interaction with the ethics committees to know their needs, to know their challenges, and to cater them in a best possible way to help them to find out the appropriate solutions in the clinical research. Sharing knowledge and the good practices is again a, one of the objective of it. Who can be a part of the Human Ethics Committee Association? Ethics committees, ethics committee members, clinical research professionals, academias, and life science students. All can join and contribute towards this initiative. What are the uh, immediate advantage to it? Over and above your individual recognitions, there are certifications. You will be a part of the various initiatives and scientific programs conducted by the Human Ethics Committee Association. You will be the volunteer presenter at the workshops and the webinars organized by the Human Ethics Committee Association. And you will have a publication opportunity as well. If you want to join and you are interested, you can follow this link. It will be shared with you as well. And this is the contact detail. Now, with this, I will hand over to President of Human Ethics Committee Association, Dr. Richa Daya Ramani, to introduce today's speaker as well as to take on from, the, from here. Thank you, Sara, and thanks to everyone. Dr. Richa, over to you. Thank you, Sudhir, and warm greetings from Human Ethics Committees Association. And here today, 
I am elated to introduce and present before you uh, Professor Dr. Parlu Bhatt, Madam, uh, who is a name in the field of pharmacology. Uh, she is from Ahmedabad. We all know that she is an eminent prof uh, professor and faculty from the prestigious LM College of Pharmacy, Ahmedabad. And she has a rich experience of teaching and guiding the graduate, uh, postgraduate and doctoral uh, scholars uh, for uh, an elaborate time span of more than 32 years. Along with this, she has taken clinical research training affiliated to Harvard Medical School, United States of America. And she is currently positioned as a research and knowledge processing pharmacologist. She is also serving on the panel of consultants to various healthcare organizations and also she is serving as a chairperson at the CIMS Sims Hospital Ahmedabad. With this, she has also authored many books, edited book chapters, and she has a number of scientific publications to her credit. She believes in learning every minute of life, which is meant to create memories and too short to regret. With this positive uh, motto of uh, lifelong learning, I am I feel quite uh, you know happy, and uh, it is a matter of pride and honor to me that Professor Dr. Parlu Bhatt is also a member of Human Ethics Committee Association, and she is also contributing and making our team stronger and stronger. So, with these words, I uh, I welcome uh, Bhatt Madam. And uh, the stage is all yours. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for this consent. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, one and all. Thank you, Hika, for giving me this opportunity to present before you. And I would first thank all the participants because you have uh, made it to this presentation on a Saturday afternoon. So thank you first. And I'll be talking on good documentation practices. I'll start sharing my presentation to you. So I'll be talking on good documentation practices. Uh, it is commonly abbreviated as uh, GDP, but recommended to be abbreviated as uh, Good Documentation Practices, GDOCP. And since records are past tense of documentation, they are also labeled, abbreviated as Good Record Keeping. I have taken the liberty of using the abbreviation GDOCP throughout my presentation. My disclosures, I am member of the Human Ethics Committee Association. Further disclosures, I follow all COVID norms, wear a mask, otherwise I'm alone over here in the boardroom. I follow hand hygiene. Uh, I have keep social distancing and I'm vaccinated. Now, following this presentation, I have prepared the presentation with the objective of recognizing the significance and impact of good documentation practices, identifying the fundamental elements of good documentation practices, and illustrate modes of achieving them. To begin with, let's go to the history of good documentation practices. How old is the history? The history of documentation is as old as the universe. I understand it began with the stone engravings, the bark inscriptions, the roll-ons, the papers. Following the paper came up the digital world, the electronic world. And I think so COVID has entirely revolutionized the digital platforms. Those days will not be far when Siri and Alexa will take over as CRCs and CRAs. Hope I am right or wrong, that is left to your discretion. And artificial intelligence will entirely change the 
pattern of documentation because data will be a resource. If I place it in the term of economics, data is money. So documentation is a very imper imperative and integral part, not only of the healthcare sector, but it is going to have a far-fetched consequences on each and every one of our day to, day to life. Talking about the stakeholders who will get affected and influenced by these documentation. Talking of the pyramid, we have the engineers and the technologists who have their documents in terms of maintenance logs, reports. We have policymakers and insurance agencies who have their database, which claims the epidemiological data, the information about the health package benefits. We have business analysts and economists who have their audit reports, the profit data, and this profit data builds up the brand equity. We have clinical medical researchers and statisticians who have the dossiers and documents of clinical trials, their notifications, which help them to get regulatory clearances. We have the quality management systems, which will do the corrective actions and preventive actions based on our SOPs, based on our documents that we hold. We have auxiliary care providers, which take up the nursing assessment forms, the orders, the vitals, the medication errors, the ADR reports, which also are fed to the clinicians, which build up the treatment sheet and in turn, look up the patient care or the subject care. So if you look up, the stakeholders of the entire healthcare sector are influenced by good documentation practices. And if I put all these together, what does good documentation practice bring? It brings patient safety and quality of care. Very importantly, right care at the right time, I could say cost-effective treatment, but better outcomes at lower cost, supports clinical decisions, helps in disease management, adheres to the treatment plans, very importantly prevents fraud, builds up a brand identity and a social and interpersonal trust, helps in the exchange of information, improves wherever required, tailors up studies, very importantly identify unmet needs, helps in the regular acceleration of the regulatory requirements, helps in the publications, and to me, very important, it brings peace of mind. So good documentation practices are required by one and all. Now, this is a visual. We Indians are cricket buff. Something is missing in this uh, picture of the cricket. I think so, since we don't have right now an interactive uh, chat. Something is missing in this picture. And I think so, you all are able to figure out what is missing. Healthcare without data is like cricket without a scoreboard. So this does not have a scoreboard. And if there is no scoreboard, we don't have any information about what's going on in the game. So healthcare without data is like cricket without a scoreboard. This was an analogy. Now, since this presentation is open and caters to lot many people from academics and industry, I have placed in a few slides which are taking up with the basics of good documentation practices and then we'll discuss the advances. So to begin with, what do I understand by a document? A document is an approved communication which could be either as a paper or an electronic form, online digital or an analog media. You may add in times to come Siri and Alexa and Google Assistant which guides about how an activity shall be executed, a vital component of safe, ethical, and effective subject care. It is a mechanism to describe, explain, instruct, record, communicate data, information, knowledge, very importantly, wisdom, regarding the subject, system, or procedure which affects the continuity of care. Very importantly, it is a legal record of care that is provided. A few examples which you could relate to your area of working. 
It includes records, bills. Records could be manufacturing records, calibration records, clinical trial records, change control records, certificate of analysis, log sheets. It could include policies, protocols, labels, SOPs, training assessments, or technology transfer documents. A word which is very concurrently or parallelly used with document is record. What is a record? Record always documents the past. It provides evidence of compliance, more so to do establishing the effectiveness of the operations of the QMS or the quality management system. So talking about records and documentation, going on to what are good documentation practices. Good documentation practices are methods for recording, correcting and managing data documents or records to ensure reliability and integrity of information and data, very importantly, at all times. Past, present and future holds on this documentation. So good documentation practices exists at, or rather it reflects all that you have done at all times. There are a few standards which will help us to do the good documentation practices. They are the six C's and the four R's. The six C's include, it has to be correct, very importantly, because it has to be reproducible. It has to be clear, meaning to say, it has to reflect what it is doing or what it is trying to establish. It has to be concise, that is to the point, comprehensive, confidential. You do not discuss your patient health data in the lift. It has to be complete and an easier option of good documentation practices is it has to be chronological. Let it go in the time frame as it happens. It becomes very easy to document. That principle is very easy to follow. The four R's include it has to be relevant, it has to be reflective, when required, it can be dragged up, retrievable, it has to be readable and legible. It has to be permanent. So the six C's and the four R's are the standards of the good documentation practices. Now, I will very quickly go through four or five slides which are required for do good documentation practices, the ALOCA principles. Many of the participants would be well versed with it, but I think so talking of good documentation practices and not talking of the principles of attributable, legible, contemporaneous, original and accurate, adding one more to it, complete, will leave the subject halfway. Attributable meaning to say, that means it has to indicate who has recorded the data or performed the activity as justified by the sign and the date. It has to be legible, meaning to say it has to be readable or interpretable once it is recorded, hence it has to be permanent. There has to be no one explain holographics. Today we are living in a world of emojis, you know. But these emojis may be understandable by different people in a different way. So no one explain holographics and properly correct it if necessary. We know how to correct it. I have placed a few uh, slides which will depict how it has to be corrected. It has to be in the real world that is contemporary. It, it must be recorded at the time when it has been generated. You cannot remember everything at all the times. So it has to be in close proximity to the time of occurrence or the point of occurrence. It has to be original. It has to be preserved in an unaltered state, no forgeries. And if an original is replaced, the GCP gives the definition of what is a certified copy. It has to be accurate, meaning to say correct. It has to be reviewed. This is a very important point. Most of the problems of good documentation can be handled if the document is reviewed on and off. Modifications need to be explained if they are not self-evident. And very importantly, it has to be complete. From the monitoring point of perspective, very quickly, I'll go through these principles. Attributable, 
if at all you are using an electronic system, see that it has a unique user ID. This is important because it traces the person who has done that activity and that person needs to be trained or should be authorized to perform that work. While auditing, you may go on to check up the training records and check out whether the person was trained to perform that activity. Check up that person is mentioned as a responsible person or authorized to do so and placed in the SOPs. Talking about the legible principle, it has to be readable. The signatures have to be identifiable. To achieve this, use a permanent ink. In case you want to make a modification, make the corrections such that who has modified it at what point of time and why this modification came into existence is placed on record. It is important because it allows people to, to understand what all activities have been done. Whenever you scribble, it gives a sort of a thought that you are trying to hide with it. You are trying to forge the information. When auditing, check the overwritten data. No use of correction fluids. Very importantly, you know, whenever, even if it is an email, try to give the responses or replies in the trail mail. Don't write a new email every time when you want to give a response. The trail mail helps up to go to the source of it and how far the things have proceeded. Data corrections should not be made without explanations. And if they are, they are a call for an audit. And auditors do check how the records have been retained. Contemporaneous is a principle of good documentation practices, record in the real world, because we do not remember everything. Backdating gives the false impression that the task has been done uh, in a timely fashion. When auditing, check up whether the data recorded by the person is not done by a person who has not done the work. Check whether the records are completely free from error. This is not possible. All humans are. So if you have the same pen, the same time, same sort of a system that is followed, it calls on for a monitoring vigilance. FDA inspectors will check the attendance records. The dates fall on Sundays when the organization is not working. So these are very important fact finds to check up for good documentation practices. It has to be original. That means the first record needs to be made by the appropriate person. Very importantly, the documentation should be on official forms or records. Do not record on your tissue papers or uh, disposable glasses or on scrape paper. If at all it happens, retain that raw data as originals or as true copy through scans. It is important because the data may be lost through these uh, original records. It may result in transcription errors. And if at all you are auditing the documents, posting notes or other loose papers in the record, they need to be audited. If at all the presence of uncontrolled documents and if at all there are any missing raw data. For accuracy, check up whether it is consistent and a real representation of facts. Do not test into compliance. This is like bootstrapping in biostatics. It is a strategy of repeated testing until a passing result is obtained and then disregarding the out of specification results without scientific justification. Now, this is considered as falsification by the regulatory authorities. Calibrate, maintain, and validate all the instruments which are of use or put to use during your research or healthcare uh, activity. It is important because it helps up to build good scientific decision making. For audits, check up whether the results are too good to be true, and also check up for audit trails for repeated tests. So these very quickly, I went up through the LOCA principles. For completeness, this is very important for healthcare records because it influences the treatment strategies. 
check off whether significant illnesses and medical conditions are well indicated. I had an assessment of a hospital where there were 25,000 IPD OPD patients of the organization and none of them had allergies or none of them had ADRs. Now this doesn't happen. So medication allergies and ADRs need to be noted. If at all, they are not there. Write down that they are not existing. Also, check up for the past medical history like serious accidents, operations or illnesses in children and adults. Check up for prenatal care, birth and illnesses. The treatment plans should be consistent with the diagnosis and there should be no evidence that the patient is placed at inappropriate risk by a diagnostic or therapeutic procedure. So this needs to be well documented to make it complete. A very important principle for good documentation practices is integrity. Now to some, it could be ethics. To some, it could be sincerity. Few may relate it to morality, trust, virtue, truth, etc. But data integrity is very, very important. If I need to define what is data integrity in terms of good documentation practices, the data is complete, consistent, and accurate throughout the life cycle. That means from the recording till the discarding or archival. And this applies to both paper and electronic data and records, and it falls under the purview of the quality management system. Let's begin now, how do we achieve this? Or to begin with, how do we entertain it? Or how do we address it? First, let us identify the most common pitfalls of good documentation practices. To me, they can be categorized into two types. One that happens because of the resources, and the second that happens because of poor manufacturing, clinical laboratory, or documentation practices. Now, in case of resources, primarily human or machine, these are errors. The data has been entered by mistake, or the person who is entering the data is ignorant of the regulatory requirement or is not properly trained. If it is an electronic data, there is an error due to transmission from one computer to another, or there is some software bug or malware which the user is unaware of, there is malfunction of the hardware, or the technology changes making it makes an older item obsolete such that the old records may become unreadable or inaccessible. So these could be well addressed by training. Poor or bad manufacturing clinical laboratory or documentation practices. Now, this needs to be handled individually. These are willfully done. So that is the content or the intent to deceive. And this happens, this needs to be handled in such a way because the consequences of this pitfalls, they go up to the empirical treatment plan, go up to the quality management, go up to the risk management. These have far-fetched consequences. So falsification or fraud with an intent to deceive is not acceptable. Selection of good or passing results to the exclusion or poor or failing results, yes, this is also not acceptable. That means somewhere or the other, at some point of time, these errors are going to come up. And unauthorized changes to date to data post acquisition, this is also a poor or a bad practice. So most of the time, this documentation is affected because of the resources or the practices which are followed. The resource practices, uh, the resources could be trained or could be uh, made aware of for the practices. The thing that needs to be remembered is that it has got far fetched consequences. Whatever you put in will someday or the other get back to you. And at that point of time, it may be difficult to handle it. So we have just classified the do's and the don'ts of good documentation practices. Used 
timed entries on designated forms, clearly identifying subjects in permanent ink, make objective comments, document any non-compliance, document oral communications, which could be in the form of phone calls or personal conversation. I very strongly uh, do not entertain oral communications, email, not even WhatsApp, e email communications in a trail mail is the best practice to follow up with the documentation. Document informed consent, state objections regarding care or case management. Do not leave blank lines between entries. Do not erase or black out an error. Do not squeeze entries between lines. Do not make offensive, humorous, or personal comments. Do not document for someone else. Do not delete, alter, or modify anyone else's documentation. Do not delete or alter the contents of clinical notes in a way that is untrackable. And do not use abbreviations. TVD, it is triple vessel disease. It is tricuspid valve disease. So do not use abbreviations or ambiguous terms. Now, what are the expectations other than the ones that I have mentioned as do's and don'ts? Do not remove pages in between. The numbering style, page X of Y format is a better option. Date and time formats should not be confusing. So the easiest option is write it down eight words. 17th July 2021. 2021 could be in the numbers, but 17th July could be in the word format because some may have date, month, year, some may have month, date, year. So, date and time formats, somebody may use uh, AM, PM, but so hence it is recommended to use the 24 hour format uh, to avoid confusion. Transcriptions, if any, should be clearly mentioned. Scrape paper, post it notes, they are prohibited. Avoid asterisks as a part of a hand change. Critical entries must be independently checked. Uh, I would like to make a comment over here. I understand, as per my experience, the best principle to follow for good documentation practices is read your document thrice. Number one, ask someone to read the document who is not much well versed with what you are doing and understand whether that person understands the same meaning as you are trying to put it in the document. I think so reading the document thrice is a very simple principle which helps up in verification and getting it reviewed by someone else who will try to understand or who would present it in the same fashion as you want it to be presented. If that is the format, that means your documentation is complete. So critical entries must be independently checked. No spaces for handwritten entries are left blank. If unused, they are crossed out or write out not applicable. Ditto marks or continuation lines are not acceptable. In Asia, more so, a stamp in lieu of a handwritten signature is not acceptable. Asian countries or Asian organizations usually have this practice. So this is not acceptable. So how does a modification in the document happen such that it becomes effective and good? Handwritten modifications should be signed and dated. No use of correction fluids. If at all the modification is done, note the reason for any alterations. Controls must exist to prevent the inadvertent use of superseded documentation. If at all, there are supporting documents which are to be added. Make a clarification of what all you have added. And if attachments are there, at least they must be referenced once within the original document. This is very important. So at what point of time that attachment has to be referred, that has to be placed where in the original document. This also needs to be signed and dated by the person who has attached it. This is just an example. I think so most of you would be well versed with this. The incorrect technique of obliterating and not initially or overwriting and not initiating. 
the correct technique is it has been crossed by a line initialed and dated so this is a correction technique i think so most of you would be well versed with it now covid has made most of the documentation or it has uplifted the digital and the electronic platform a little bit of uh, good documentation practices for electronic versions uh, the management system that you are using should be reliable validated and adaptive it it should have the ability to copy backup and retrieve the electronic versions if they are to be modified they have to be modified by authorized personnel they have to be access should be controlled by the password or by other means audit trails must be maintained if at all there are any changes and or deletions now these are the different methods of documentation i have just placed them each one of you based upon the sector of your working could pick up but i have one personal opinion to share over here that is uh, usually what we do is before we start any activity we have our own sops for that activity and we try to follow the sop of that activity somehow i feel that first let us you should do a simulation or a pilot exercise of that activity and then build up the sop because most of the sops they move from one organization to another and every organization has its own traits of working so developing one's own indigenous sop will resolve most of the time most of the difficulties but before you develop the sop have your own simulation or your pilot exercise and then develop the sop i think so that would serve lot many problems of good documentation practices so uh, you could either adopt subjective objective assessment and plan or if at all your narrative is related to healthcare it could be the situation the background the assessment the response whatever is your method of documentation but it has to be realistic and it should relate to what the activities that you are doing uh, these are the few which i have placed i am not going to elaborate on this you may pick up the one of your choice and which relates to your activity so the pdca for good documentation practices is first is a plan design the forms to enable data integrity train them develop that work culture follow the principles of alcoa including completeness coach or train check that is review approve auditing review audit trails and act so plan do check and act for good documentation practices thus i would say what do i achieve by good documentation practices evidence based therapy it influences the quality management systems the risk management strategies and in this covid era the healthcare sector has got a very important role to play contributing to the economy of so many countries more so india it also influences the gross domestic product spiritually speaking the universal truth is creation preservation and destruction documentation is past present and future it is a rigor and a reliable source of scientific knowledge and wisdom so use of adequate tools to affect this will help so in a broader sense of preservation through documentation i end my presentation over here but before that i would like to make one comment uh i think so every one of you at one point of time during your work would have encountered the good and the bad part of uh, documentation so in your chat box if you could place this examples the moderator would pick up them and it would become a easy way to share this information and learn of how good documentation has its effect i will share a couple of few real world um, examples that i encountered in this uh, covid era uh, 
I had my COVID vaccine, COVID shield in January, and you had to get registered through the COVID app. Okay. My name is Parlo. You all know it. Spelled as P A R L double O P. Inadvertently, it got typed as Parlok. Now, Parlok and Parlok, both are unique on Google. So, my vaccination certificate read Parlok but. The age mentioned was 28. This is three decades late. Now, if I want to travel out of my country with this vaccination certificate, Will I be able to travel? Uh, few poets, they say what's there in a name. Everything is in a name, whether it is an inheritance of a will or whether it is the claim of your insurance or whether it is a vaccination certificate, you want to travel abroad. So this is my example that I came once the app was um, further revised and then the app had one more inclusion of revision, the Kappa came into picture and Parlok became Parlok. So this is one example I would like to share. Another example I would like to share is uh, my mobile number is 98240-23453. Okay. By mistake, somebody shared the number and instead of three, the number five was replaced by three. Now, 98240-25453 is the number of an intensivist of a hospital. Now, my number was shared to the Ahmedabad Municipal Corporation, who was doing the distribution of oxygen cylinders during the COVID era. So I was leave, getting receiving frantic calls for this intensivist instead of his number, my number was there, that how many oxygen cylinders are required. This patient is in ICU, how he or she is doing. So again, I had to go to the CAPA, went, got the details from the hospital, rectified the number, send it to the Ahmedabad Municipal Corporation, and the phone calls stopped. Similarly, instead of 98240, you write four this way, so it is read as five. So the number was taken as 98250-23453. Now this number is of one Dr. Harshad. Harshad Bhai is also the name of my father. So I get calls, Harshad Bhai Che. Now, which Harshad Bhai? So, I did the kappa, found out that this is the number of Dr. Harshad, who is a physician, and the patients are trying to call to him. So these are small mistakes, but they go a long way, specifically in eras like COVID, where it influences the patient care so very largely and critically. So these are the two personal experiences that I had of late. One more example I would like to share, leaving extra space. Okay, a document which read not completed with too much of space between not and completed was forged to not completed. Okay, so this is the how a malfunction occurs because of poor documentation practices. Do you read this as 24, 29, 27. God bless us. And each value is important when it represents very critical activities. So good documentation practices, how they affect. Another example, I'll tell you of a real world, a hospital formulary. It has the medicine Clavix, which includes aspirin and clopidogrel, both 75 milligram. Now, in the formulary, the generics, uh, the active ingredients, instead of both aspirin and clopidogrel being placed, Clavix A underneath the IP was uh, clopidogrel 75 milligram. Now, when the data was pulled out, that how many patients after angioplasty are receiving dual antiplatelet therapy of aspirin and clopidogrel, 
all of them were receiving only clopidogrel. That means that this was non-compliance to the ACC guidelines. They were, they were not given dual antiplatelet therapy. The problem was that they were given dual antiplatelet therapy, but there was a poor documentation in the, inadvertently, documentation in the formulary, where instead of aspirin and clopidogrel, by mistake, only clopidogrel was noted. So this is another real world experience of how documentation influences and shows that there is a non-adherence to good clinical practices. So with that, uh, I leave the session open for question and answers, as well as for all of you to place up your uh, examples through which I think so it becomes the best modus operandi for all of us to learn how we can improvise and have a data which is correct, complete, critical, so on and so forth. Thank you so much for a patient listening. Stop sharing it. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Parlok, for the wonderful session and the uh, uh, examples that you have uh, shared with us. Uh, so uh, it was indeed a very uh, informative uh, session. So now that uh, we have a few uh, questions, and uh, firstly, I would like to start with, uh, now that we are in the uh, COVID uh, uh, situation, the whole entire world, uh, not only India, but the entire world is in this, and there is a lockdown in a few places still. So how would the good documentation practices be followed with people still being uh, in their individual places and uh, working? The digital platform and the electronic media, I think so that's the best option as of now. See, irrespective of whether it is a COVID era or a non-COVID era, Good documentation practices existed and will exist. Okay, they have to, they are omnipresent. The only change would be the change of the media. We would have to find out ways and means of authenticating electronic versions. Yes, uh, sure. Uh, so uh, in, in a small site, only where uh, three or uh, four clinical trials are being uh, conducted, and uh, they might not uh, be immediately adapted to the uh, electronic media. And uh, how do they uh, continue to follow the good uh, documentation practice? First of all, this era, who is not adapted to electronic media? Everyone is adapted to electronic media. Even if it is a small site, most of the trials will have having electronic medical records. And even if you don't have your electronic medical records, your Excel sheets and XML sheets are good enough to document all that you do. So I think so even if it's a small site, you may not have the uh, EMR of that site, but at least you can have versions which will help you to cater to it. Software versions which will help you to capture the data. Your smart devices, I think so, would do even would be good enough to document that. Yes, yes. Um, so next is, uh, are there any specific guidelines uh, or uh, rules uh, given by the regulatory authority to be uh, followed? A few countries do have. And if you want up, you can go to the WHO site, which also lays down a few guidelines for it. So. Uh, each country could also have its own documentation guidelines, but even WHO has defined them. And I think so these guidelines could be tailor made to the activities that you perform. Uh, so I would like to relate one of the situation, like one of the example that you have given your name on the uh, vaccination uh, portal. So I had a similar experience actually, even my name was uh, uh, mistaken. Uh, uh, mistaken. So I was related to the examples and we are, uh, thank you for uh, sharing uh, your uh, simple and very informative examples actually. Thank you so much. Uh, so uh, we may take a few more questions. Are 
there any example to be shared by the participants? Uh, you can give them no. a couple of minutes. If at all they can share the examples. Uh, yes, ma'am, but uh, they have not shared uh, yet. In fact, I forgot to tell this, uh, announce this at the beginning of okay. the presentation. Otherwise, it would have been uh, better for them to remember. Yes. Uh, I think, ma'am, uh, uh, there are no uh, questions as of now. You have almost covered uh, all the important uh, topics, and it was uh, very clear. So, thank you. Uh, so, thank you, ma'am. Uh, I thank uh, Dr. Richa, uh, Mr. Sudhir, and uh, uh, importantly, Dr. Parlo. For uh, being a part of this and uh, enlightening us on an importance in a very uh, understandable manner and uh, giving us a few examples. And uh, you're privileged to uh, have you, ma'am. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you, you very, thank you very much, ma'am. Thanks for your nice presentation. Thank you, Sudhir Bhai, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, you Sarah. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you all.